so what I'm doing today is I'm repairing a saxophone. What is wrong with a saxophone? Well, the issue is that it was dropped and it fell, boom, just like that. And so the, I don't know saxophone terms, warn you right of that, like this is like the bell end. So you can see that bell end, that lip is bent down and it's pushed in, like the whole thing, look at that, it's an oval, should be round. At the same time, if you can look in there, right, right in there, you can see a nice little crease where this brace behind it, that the whole thing kind of like pushed in on this brace, and it looks like this brace right here, the whole thing needs to come this way. So that is what's going on. Because of that, the end result is that these keys, and I don't know what notes these are, see how that didn't really go down much? They should flatten down and fit on those, what, tone holes? That doesn't sound right. I don't know if that's right. Uh, but they like they do not move at all, so you can't play the. I think it's like low. Uh, it's low something. I don't know D or G, and like these buttons. These buttons should be flat. They are all out of whack because, I guess, let's see, I guess like whatever misshapenness is going on here has pushed these things open more. So that's that one. Yeah. So it's just it's these two. So these are only like note holes, the note hole tone holes, notes, whatever. They're affected, and this thing should be flat. And they should be down for us. That further makes me think that this whole thing is moved this way. Looking at the brace, like it all just needs to go that way. You need to get it round. Now, typically metal, it wants to return to the shape it was in previously before the damage. So it should want to return to round. The question is, how do I get it round? How do I like yank this whole thing this way to like straighten it all up? That is the task. And I'm thinking right now, which is the only idea I have. I was trying to think, like, do I have something around kind of put in the bell end and use it as leverage? As I, you know, put that in there, have it maybe in a vice or something, use it as leverage. And I was trying to think, what do I have that's round that won't mess this up further? I was like, oh, I've got a metal baseball bat. Wait, I've got a wooden baseball bat. So I think a wooden baseball bat fit in here, and that might give me a little bit of leverage to try to take this bell end around and get it round in shape. And, I mean, this lip, I'm thinking maybe just by hand, use my fingers to try to... Strain it out. That's what we're after. I don't know. I've never tried this. I mean, I've hammered on some metal before. Never to this degree. I mean, this saxophone's going to be kind of expensive. But right now, this thing, you know, as long as you don't hit these low notes, you're okay. I mean, it plays fine, except this, these, this button right here, these these notes. And they uh, they don't shut any. So it's, uh, it is certainly, oh, you know what? This one, I'm looking at this one. This one is not shutting flat either. Which, which button is that? That's this one. So yeah, this, this, looking at this one, the way it is, I don't know if you see that, just barely, I, again, it looks like the whole thing needs to come this way. I think that would flatten that out. So it might just be in a matter of like going like that. Let me see, if I can look at this. Yeah, it does look like it might be bent that way a little bit. It's hard to tell, man, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to what it looked like before. I did not drop it. I was going to put that out there, get ahead of that. I did not drop this. Also, not my saxophone. So I do get a baseball bat. I mean, I almost have to like put in a vice or something because I need it to stay in place. Do I have a baseball bat that I'm okay with tearing up like that, putting in a vice and just more on the handle? I might. Let me figure out what, I mean, I think, I'm looking around the shop, like, trying to out, do I have anything that works? You know, I've got like PVC pipe. I don't think that's strong enough. I'm not gonna baseball bat. It's dense, that is good. I'm going to look around. I'm going to see what I got. We're going to see what we can do with this. Because if I can get it even a little bit better, well, that's better than what I got. I mean, we're... Improvement is good. Let's see what we can improve. I mean, yeah, I didn't realize... I didn't realize I hit that other note. Like that... This, like, this pad, it was just not sitting flat on that thing at all. I think if you bend it out, I think it would get better. Yeah, I think... I think, I think we got it. Let's figure out. Let's see what we got here. What we can put together. So I found a baseball bat, and it's one I don't, I'm not too worried about messing up, because if you look at that, I've cracked that bat, glued it, tried to fix it, and it just cracked right back. Here's the fun thing about that, if you can check out that signature, old Pete Rose bat. Yes, it's a Pete Rose bat. I mean, I don't know how long ago they're making Pete Rose bats. I can tell you they weren't recently, but I got me a wooden Pete Rose baseball bat. It is, of course, a Louisville Slugger Flame Tempered. So I don't want to mark this handle. I mean. I don't think it really matters. This thing is cracked a couple different ways. 
But I'm gonna see if I can do something, put something in the vice jaws just to not mess this thing up too bad. And I guess I should make sure it actually fit in the saxophone. Oh my gosh, it, it does not, it's not going very far. Huh, do I have a smaller handle? I think I have like a kid's metal bat. That might have to work. Yeah, this, I mean, I think it might fit in if this thing has not been top, but it is been done, it doesn't fit. So there goes that idea. What else do I have? All right, we've got a good old East End Little League bat. We're gonna just see what happens. Kind of fits in there better. And so I'm just, I'm gonna put the bat in there and at least this time I'm gonna do my hand, I'm just gonna like pull it back this way, see if I can get this bell end, this horn to round out a little bit. I mean, it should want to straighten out. Things that's on hold, I'm just you know, doing a little bit, kind of checking it. It still seems pretty messed up, does not quite seem round. I, I, mean, I don't want to mess this up, at the same time it is already messed up, so you know, what can you do? It's got to be better, I mean the, the bat fits in there a little bit better, so it must mean we're getting a little bit more round. It certainly looks rounder. Oh, you know, and this, this dent back here has come out a little bit, not great, but a little bit. So I think we're tracking in the right direction. I'm seeing some creasing here. I don't know if that's for me. I wouldn't think so because it's bad. It's like round all the way around, but there's definitely a crease there. Let's see. So these, these buttons, they are not, they are better. Like one is almost good. This lower one, uh, no, that's not quite. I think that is, I think this thing needs to rotate this way. They are better. There's more movement. Like these keys are flatter. They did a lot. It didn't seem like it did a lot, but it has done a lot. Now I'm going to see if I can rotate the horn the other way. And I might need, I think, do it this way. I think I need to like, I need to somehow secure this. That way I can, because I'm moving two different things. There's, it's not going to work. The bat, I don't think I need to. Did I put that crease in there? Let me see. How far does this bat go in? That could be me. But it's a small crease. And again, we're better than what we were before. It's all about improvement. Yeah, I need to... Alright, let me see about putting this bat in the vise and somehow protecting it. A little Superman tape there, because you know, put a Superman tape in your bat, hit harder. It's back. It's true. So this is the vice setup. I had the vice. I did use some phones, because I didn't want to tear up this baseball bat. It's nice. I'll probably never use it again. I'll probably get thrown away one day. But for now, I want to take care of it. So I put the foam in there, crank it down to where this thing... That wobble, that's just the vice wobbling. That is not the bat wobbling. One of the bat, set, the bat stationary, it is. And that's the setup. That is how you fix the saxophone. So you see, I've got the bat in the vice. It seems secure. That little bit of wobble is the vice attached to my table, which the camera sits on the table. That's how it works. So what I need to do is to move this bell end this way. And yeah, you know, I'm kind of based on this bracket here, making sure it's straight, just kind of eyeballing it and seeing what looks straight. Like there's a you can kind of see a line, guesstimate a line on the back. There is a seam on the bottom, so I'm just kind of eyeballing, seeing what I think should be where. And that's what I'm getting. I'm kind of looking at it from every angle and looking at it. And when I look at it from this angle, like it certainly seems off. Uh, all I can do is eyeball. So I'm going to, kind of like I did before, put the button here and I try to get it more round, which it certainly is rounder. I don't know if it's perfectly round, but well, yeah, we got time to throw that out. I'm gonna try to get this thing kicked over that way, see if we can get some clearance, because we were already, we were way better than we thought before. And I think, to know, now I gotta tell myself, put this on here, and make sure I'm going in the right direction. You don't wanna go in the wrong direction. Let's see. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Now really, I'm having to use the saxophone itself as a fulcrum, is that the right physical science term? It's been a long time since I've been in physical science. You can see it stretching out a little bit. Part wants to just go for, go for two, but I'm gonna I'm gonna take this slow. See, so, yeah, the nice thing is I have these keys as my reference point to where are the keys closing? If they are, or if they are not, I know I'm not doing it right. That pad looks close. I don't know if that pad is quite closing. I'm just looking at this pad right down here. I see a little bit of gap, so I think it's not quite there. Look at these keys. These keys are looking a lot straighter. Well, now I'm very confused because you know I was thinking 
I need to rotate a little bit more. But this key, this pad looks like it's shut. This one looks like it's not. Well, this one's not. This one is. It looks like it needs to rotate. I rotate it too far, but that bottom one just looks off. I don't know. If you just if you just pull this key hard, it seems to seem they seem to shut. You just gotta pull like a little extra hard because it looks like if you don't pull it extra hard, a little bit of air escapes. But that lower one, that does not when you're resting, it does not look like it is uh, shut. Just super low, and this works well. Let's eyeball the rest of it. I haven't eyeballed it in a minute. I don't know, it still looks a little crooked to me. But the main thing is whether these keys shut, or the pads shut. I don't know. This lower one is it doesn't look like it's shut. I guess I might get somebody to play it, see see what's going on. I mean, from this from this back side, it looks shut. The top looks shut, but just right on the outside here, it doesn't quite look shut. Hmm, got a little bit right there. I don't know if I could get that or not. I might could. Actually, I don't know. I don't know how to get to it. Like, no, it has some hammer and dolly work for like automotive stuff. That I almost need like a rod or something to stick in there. Like, you need like a round end because again, like any metal work, you need everything rounded edges, sharp edges. You're gonna put creases into it. Like, I don't know if I put that crease in there from the back. Like, could that be? I mean, that's not super sharp, but. Sharp edge, but it could be sharp enough to put a crease in there. I like it matters, but overall this thing is way better. And there's one little dent in there. Because what happened is, oh, finger stuck in there. When the thing went back, you see right, right over my finger, see that little thing that went into the back of the horn, dome, bell, something. That dent looks better after pulling everything out. I don't know, we are close. I guess I just need to see if that one pad that I'm not sure is closing, if it is. These top pads, they are definitely closing. I don't think I took it too far. I mean, this pad, if everything else seems right, this, I can always maybe like put a little twist on it, like just grab the arm itself, maybe put a little twist on it, to see if it's getting right. It may, it may be right. Let's work on this bell end. I mean, I think that is a matter of just, can I do it by hand? Probably shouldn't be having this thing flopping around. If I did that, man, that's pretty well been in there. I'm gonna need something. Actually, I think I have some jewelry repair pliers that might work. They have like plastic grips on them. Let me see. I'm trying. I'm using my thing. That thing is bent hard. I cannot. I cannot. I, mean, I wonder if I can use it on the edge of my workbench. Let's see if we can get some uh, entanglement lines that way. Oh yeah, there we go. It's better. It still needs a little bit more work. It's better though. Let's go for two. Is it round? I always tell if it's round better in the camera. It's got a little bit of ovalness to it. It's not better than it was before. I think it's still, I feel like it's still a little bit bent into this bracket right here. I don't know the best way to like pull that out directly. Let's work on this one there and see if we can do just a little bit better. Something just looks off on this. I don't know, it's just like since it's all like a little bent up, it looks, it just looks off. You know what? It fits in the case right away. Let me see if it fits in the case. Oh, it fits in the case a little better. I think I'm trying to use like, just can you see the indentation of the case where this thing used to fit? Definitely better than what it was before. I don't want to work on this edge anymore. Because it's not smooth, I think. I think I might put some creases in there and get it on, on the edge of the bench. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, this part, I don't know. 
I see how to put priests in there, but it's just might forever be a mystery. I don't think I'm priests on the edge of the bench. Maybe I am. I don't know. It is better there. I think if you didn't know what you're looking at, I think you'd be like, oh yeah, that's okay. And it's not, but it looks okay. Let's see. That one definitely shuts. That one I don't know. It just doesn't look quite right. I don't know if I can do much to it. I'm gonna get somebody to play this and just see, you know, if it like I assume if it squeaks. Yeah, you know, I assume we'll know if these notes or these pads aren't quite closing because they'll sound terrible. I don't know. It's kind of what I'm betting on, what I'm hoping on. So let's uh, let's get let me see. There was this one dent deep in there. That dent is better. I didn't even mess with that dent. I don't know, just like pulling it, straighten that out. There's still the dent here at this bracket. I think like the thing needs to come out. I just don't know. I use the old baseball bat repair. I don't know if that quite does it. Let me see. Maybe flame of fire here. Just leave one up on. How do I want to do this? Do I want to put it right against that? I might, I might should maybe well enough one here. Let's give it a tour. Let's see if the user can play it. If it works, if so, I have successfully repaired a saxophone. Who'd have thought? Certainly not me. So this saxophone, it is repaired. I mean, look at it. This edge looks a little funky. You can kind of feel it's got a roll in it. I don't mess with it anymore. I'm afraid I'll mess it up some more. I mean, I could mess with it forever. You might could lift it up a little bit more. It's fine. The pads. The keys, they close. It's been tested. It's been played. No squeaks, no noises. It's good. It is, you know, it's worse for the wear, certainly, but it plays, and that's the important thing. And if you glance at this, like, it doesn't look quite as bad anymore. Like, before, this lip was flattened. It is not. I repaired a saxophone. Didn't think I'd be saying that a week ago, but here we are. So I may open an instrument repair business. I don't know. We'll see. But my prices are a little high because I have quality work. So you got to deal with that.